Hi everyone and welcome to today's video. Today I'm doing a video uh, talking about uh, a subject that comes up quite a lot uh, in comments and questions and things and that is, uh, you know, about buying your first fountain pen. Uh, now, I have a lot of pens I want to show you today and I've kept them uh, to roughly a $50 US budget. Uh, a couple of them are slight, a little bit more. I think one's maybe about the $70 mark, $60, $60 mark, I think. Um, but they're all pens within a entry level price point and ranging from $3 through to, as I said, about the $60 mark. But there are a few criteria I think you should be thinking about uh, when buying your first fountain pen. Firstly, I think it's a great idea. Fountain pens are amazing writing instruments. They write beautifully. They, um, they you know, choices of ink and all these sorts of things make it a really, really lovely pleasant writing experience, and that is for both left and right handers. So if you're a left-handed writer, don't be afraid to start using a fountain pen. I'm left-handed, and there are a lot of myths about left-handed pen users. There are a few things we have to do a little bit little bit dif more you know, differently. Um, you know, we have the tendency to smear the ink because we're running our hand through what we've written. So changing hand position or paper position, I've done a video uh, on uh, being a left-handed fountain pen user, so you can check that out. And there are also other resources online as well. Um, so a few things to think about, but don't let that stop you from being a fountain pen user. I've been using them for years, reviewing them for years, had hundreds in my possession over the years. So it's absolutely doable. But there are some criteria, regardless of what hand you write with and regardless of where you're coming from, if you're a ballpoint user or, you know, um, just wanting to, you know, t if you're coming back to fountain pens. So um, I've taken some notes in case I look down. So I uh, just, I didn't want to actually miss anything in this video. So the first point is budget. Like we all have a budget and it's rare that the first fountain pen you buy is going to be a Mont Blanc 149. You know, um, so set yourself a budget because you can find something at any budget. As I said, I'm keeping this video to roughly the 50 US dollar mark as the upper limit. That is only because it's a nice round point for entry level sort of pens. Uh, and a lot of the pens I suggest as first fountain pens tend to fall under that category. Um, but there are pens in all price points. So find a budget and sort of stick to it. But don't be limited to the upper end of that budget. Look at what else is below it as well. Um, and then once you get infected with the fountain pen virus, as some people say, look at more expensive pens, if that's something you want to go into. But one thing I will absolutely say, one of the pens on this list is a $3.50 or $5 fountain pen. It writes beautifully, it's reliable, it works first time, every time. It's a fountain pen, it's $5, and it outwrites a lot of fountain pens well into the hundreds of dollars. So that's coming up in this video, and it'll be no surprise to anyone who is a fountain pen user already, um, but it is a great starting point and a great way of introducing other people to the fountain pen hobby. Okay, second point is, are you wanting to use cartridges or bottled ink for your pen? Now this, if you're wanting cartridges, firstly, you have to understand some brands use proprietary cartridges, so they are designed for their pens only. Lamy does this, Pilot does this. A lot of brands use just their own brand uh, and that can limit your, uh, your ink selection. If you get a pen that is a standard international uh, cartridge converter pen, you can use a number of brands and brands like Graphon Faber-Castell, Mont Blanc, uh, you know, Caveco, Diamine, these all use standard international cartridges and make them with beautiful inks. Um, but if you are buying a pen, check to see if it's proprietary. Proprietary. If it is, you're going to need to use their brand. And that goes into converters as well. Like Alami Converter is something you need to buy separately so that you can use bottled ink in Alami pen. And, you know, there it goes. There are other filling systems. Um, other, the main other filling system you'll see in this uh, particular list is a piston filling fountain pen. Um, and I'll explain the, the, the filling systems as I cover the pen. But basically, that has an inbuilt reservoir that uses a piston uh, that is activated from the back of the pen. And you fill that up using bottled ink. Um, so work out what you want. The, the advantage for me of cartridges is that you, when it runs out, you can pop a new one in. I, there's a couple of pens I use with cartridges and I tend to carry cartridges in my pen case 
for that pan so that when it runs out I can just pop a new one in. I don't have to carry a bottle of ink, I don't have to carry you know paper towel and all those sorts of things. It's simple, it's clean. There is waste though. So, you know, like be aware, you can refill cartridges using a syringe. Uh, there are lots of videos on doing that. Um, but be aware that if you're buying, uh, you are gonna be throwing out plastic cartridges if you go down the cartridge uh, path. Uh, but there is a, a convenience factor about that, certainly. The last main point I wanna make is or the last question to ask yourself is what nib size you want because some pens come in limited nib sizes, some come in a huge range of nib sizes. Some you can buy new nibs for uh, and replace out in different sizes, things like that. Absolutely great. But have an idea of what you're after. Go and try a few pens, like do some handwriting and you know see what size ballpoint pen you are using. Um, as a vague sort of rough rule, like I've found that a lot of sort of one millimeter uh, roller ball pens is the equivalent of say a medium to broad fountain pen as a general rule different countries and different pen brands but as a general rule I think that tends to sort of line up fairly uh, closely um, but have an idea do you have small handwriting if you have smaller handwriting and you want to write small perhaps look at a finer nib uh, if you're wanting to use paper that isn't particularly fountain pen friendly or you have to use it in an office sometimes a fine or an extra fine nib is actually going to be a good way for you to go because it's less ink on the page. Um, if you're wanting to get the most out of ink in terms of like saturation and shading and sheen, then maybe you want a broad nib or a double broad or even to go down the stub nib or italic nib path, we can get a 1.1 or a 1.5 millimeter nib, uh, which is a, a flat uh, nib with no round tipping and it gives you natural line variation. Now, there are, as I said, tons of YouTube videos around about all of this sort of stuff. So jump on, uh, my channel, I have a number of videos where I talk about, say, the Lamy nibs and the Pilot nibs and things like that. I show the different italics and the different uh, nib widths. There's a bunch of other videos, a bunch of other amazing people. Goulet pens have amazing videos on a lot of this. So watch this video, see the pens I put out, think what you would like, and hopefully these a couple of questions and a couple of these pens that I'm showing you give you a few ideas. So now let's get stuck into these pens. As I said, there's like 20 of them, so it's going to take a little bit of time, but... Uh, I hope you enjoy this video and uh, thanks for watching. Okay, this is gonna be a long portion of the video. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you a, you know, a range of pens, there's about 20 pens here. Uh, I'm gonna give you a vague couple of ideas of what the filling system is and that sort of stuff. Um, and then uh, talk about the price. Now, a couple of things. Firstly, when you, what I wanna say at the outset is these prices, these are a, a rough American price, US dollars. So depending on where you are, pens will cost a different amount. This is just a, a guide uh, to put them sort of into context with each other. But shop around. All these pens are available at multiple different prices at different sellers, okay? Uh, so different different online stores, different brick and mortar stores. Some of these pens will be harder to find in brick and mortar stores, particularly this first bracket, which I'm calling the uh, Chinese eBay pens, uh, which are wonderful pens, but not available necessarily in brick and mortar stores. Um, so yeah, shop around, find the best place for you, look at warranties and all that sort of stuff if that's what you're interested in. But let's start looking at pens. Okay, so as I said, this is the Chinese uh, eBay pen bracket. And I'm gonna start with Jin Hao. I'm gonna show two pens to start with. These are the X450 and the X750. These are metal pens, these are heavy pens, and they're both, both very similar. They both come with the same number six size nib, which you can swap out. So you can buy a lot of nibs from places like Goulet Pens in a standard number six size, and you can put one in here, as well as one of the other pens that I'll show you in just a second. Um, different finishes, lots of different uh, you know colors available of these pens. Sturdy pens come with a uh, converter. Now, these are a standard international pen, but this is not a standard international converter. Um, so you can use a standard international cartridge in there if that is what you're after. And that goes for both uh, of these pens. These pens roughly retail for $5 each uh, on places like eBay. A lot of these prices, of course, plus postage as well. Um, but these are really good options. So the X450 and the X750. The next Jinhao pen I want to show you is the 992. Now this is a plastic pen. There, are, it's you know roughly modelled off a Sailor 1911 uh, pen. And there's a couple of other brands that use a very similar sort of shape and size pen to this, including uh, Monteverde. 
um, plastic pen, smaller nib. Uh, once again, cartridge converter, same sort of situation goes as the other Jinhao pens. This one is a little cheaper. This retails at around the $3 mark on eBay. Um, really handy little pen. Um, some issues with cracking occasionally on some of them, uh, but in general, um, a pretty you know good, reliable, very cheap pen. Um, I gift these to people when I'm trying to get them into the uh, fountain pen hobby. I fill up with ink, I give it to them. I might do a little bit of work on the nib, uh, but it's a stat pretty sort of reliable way of uh, introducing people to the hobby. Next is a pen from Wingsung. Now this is the Wingsung 618. Now this pen is a little different to the others in that it is not a cartridge converter pen, it is a piston pen. So it has a little, um, you might be able to see through the translucent material a little bit, there's a little piston in there that when I turn the knob at the end, uh, it goes up uh, and down. So when I say about a piston pen, this is what I, what I mean. So um, it has a little inbuilt piston. So you dip that into a bottle of ink and you turn uh, the knob and the piston in there goes up and down drawing ink into the barrel of the pen it holds a bit more ink than a cartridge converter pen uh, and it's a fun, they're a fun filling system you know the 618 has a, like an inlaid nib uh, and it's a pretty decent pen uh, and it, it comes i think it only comes in the one nib grade or fine or extra fine uh, and it's about between seven and fifteen dollars depending on sort of where you get it and when you get it the next pen is from Pen BBS. Now, Pen BBS has a huge range of pens. This is my pick of the Pen BBS pens. This is the 456. It is a vacuumatic filler. So it has a different filling system that uh, uses, like you pull out this rod, there's a little suction in there that when you push that down, it creates a vacuum behind the, the piston. And when that pops, it draws ink up into the pen. It's a very cool filling system usually in much more expensive pens, uh, but this is the Pen BBS 456, which if you shop around, you can get for around the $50 mark. This is one of those pens I talk about where you can swap out the nib. So I replaced the nib on this with a pen from Goulet, a nib from Goulet Pens, um, much better nib, nice medium, uh, and made it a really, really nice, really nice pen. But in terms of pen BBS, this is my pick of the pens. The last pen uh, on, in the Chinese pen bracket, I will say, is the Moonman T1. This is a what I think is actually a very nice pen. I did a review of this, um, which you can check out on my channel. Um, once again, it's a piston filling pen. You can see the piston working very nicely in this uh, in this model because it's see through. Got nice metal parts, plastic, um, and retails for around thirty dollars. So a really n simple, easy model uh, for uh, you know people who want to get a piston filling pen. That's a little bit sort of rugged and also. A little bit unique it's it's a little bit different so that's the moon man t1 the next two pens are from pilot um and they are a little bit different to each other first is this this is the varsity or you can get like the v pen this is a what some people refer to as a disposable fountain pen um, this one comes pre-loaded with ink you can get a number of different colors indicated by the color on the back of the pen so there's blue there's like a turquoise there's pi uh, purple green red and you can also buy them in a pack of those colors um, super super handy super reliable little pen to have i carry one of these in my uh, backpack in case i forget my pencil case or in case you know someone wants to borrow a pen or whatever the case may be um, really reliable really easy clean and it, you can either throw it out or there is a hack to filling these up again which people have done on um on youtube oh and they these these are a bargain these retail for, like these are three dollars fifty from one of the american retailers so super cheap you like you cheaper than some ballpoint pens so you know and for a fountain pen which is really nice the next is the Pilot Metropolitan, or M2, depending on where you are in the world, what version you get. Uh, there's a bunch of different finishes, plain ones, animal ones, different colours, things like that. Uh, the nib range is fine, medium, or there's what they call a, a like a, it's a broad, but it's like a, 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 a small stub nib. Uh, this one has a medium nib on it. Uh, and it is uh, just a really reliable writer. This is another uh, cartridge converter pen proprietary to uh, pilot so using their converters but uh like the convert when i say converter this is a converter so it's a small basically it's a small piston um that you so you can fill it either directly into the bottled ink but i prefer to fill through um the nib you actually get a bit more ink because you fill the feed uh and nib as well uh you dip that in and you draw it up into the uh pen using the the, the little uh twist knob on the end there 
uh, proprietary to Pilot, as I said. Um, but the Pilot Metropolitan retails for around the $20 US mark. So super affordable, metal pen, really reliable, great smooth nibs, like an absolute bargain. And when this came out on the market, it sort of changed things. So yeah, Pilot Metropolitan, very, very highly recommended. The next three pens come from Platinum, another Japanese brand. Here they are. Now, these two are quite connected. This is a Platinum Preppy. Uses, there's a couple of different nib grades available, like very fine through to sort of a medium-ish sort of nib. They are cartridge converter pens and can be eyedropped. Eyedropped basically means, and you can do this with a lot of pens, is that you take the body of the pen off and you fill this whole body with ink. Now you do need to put some silicon grease and a little rubber o-ring up here on the section to make sure that you don't get any leak, but that fills up this entire body with ink. These are super reliable pens. When I spoke about a pen that was like five dollars, and this is retails for about five, um, and about you know being more reliable than a lot of other pens. I recently had one of these inked up in a drawer for two years untouched, completely untouched, never opened, never written with. I took it out and it wrote straight up. They're smooth, they're reliable and super affordable and you can put cartridges in them or if you decide to, which I don't agree with, but you can, th if when it runs out at this price, you could, if you wanted to, throw it out. But super reliable pen. And then something like the uh, Prefonte here, uh, is basically a grown-up version of the Preppy, and this retails for about $10. It, it's the same deal. It's basically the same uh, pen. can be eyedropped, cartridge converter. I've put a converter in this one. Um, and it is, you know, it comes with similar sort of nib grades, of like a 0 0.2, 0 0.38, 0 0.5, um, and which basically equates to, uh, equates to extra fine, fine, and medium. Uh, and it's just a nice pen. Like, it's got a metal clip as opposed to the plastic clip, but super affordable at $10, uh, and really great gift pen, I think. If someone was thinking of starting to go in fountain pens, put a, a cartridge in there, and away you go. The last platinum pen I wanted to talk about was this, which is the Platinum Procyon. This is probably the most expensive pen on the list. Retails for around the $60 mark, but occasionally you can get it on special below $60. Um, basically, it is, it's just a cartridge converter pen once again. Platinum uses proprietary cartridges and converters, just so you know. Um, but it's a metal pen, it's got a nice solid body, really reliable writer, as I said, about $60. Nice classy pen and a nice range of sort of colours available as well, although the colours do sort of come off the pen, they do chip. But, you know, it's just a lack of a, a metal pen. So that's what it is. Uh, but around the $60 mark, really good reliable pen and write beautifully. Platinum pens generally write really, really beautifully. Now we get to my one of my favorite pen brands, and I'm just showing two of them. Any pen from this brand would be a great first fountain pen. The brand is Twisby, and the pen I'm starting with is the Go. This is their most affordable pen. This rate retails for about $20. Comes in nibs from extra fine through to, I think, a 1.1 millimeter sub. So extra fine, fine, medium, broad, and a 1.1. Um, this has a really interesting filling system of an inbuilt sort of spring-loaded, uh, you know, sort of, um, piston uh, so you put that in the ink you push that that spring down and when you release it it sucks ink up into the pen giving you a nice fill an interesting filling system and sort of a cool look there's a few different finishes available um, it's a really comfortable pen in the hand because it's got sort of a nice size uh, and the nibs are super smooth twisby nibs are great they're not super wet um, but these are pens that are quite reliable and quite um, you know like affordable and little lanyard hole on there really good everyday carry pens. The next Twisby pen is the Twisby Eco. This retails for 30 to 35 American. Once again, nice piston filler, um, good mechanism. You can take these apart and clean and maintain them, which I love. Same range of nibs as the Go. In fact, they're the same nibs, so extra fine through to, I think, a 1.1 or a 1.5 millimeter stub. Really super reliable. Um, good ink capacity, nice pens, nice build quality. Had some issues a few years ago with cracking, but that seems to have, like, for the most part, fixed itself. Um, but nice, reliable pens and lots of new finishes coming out all the time, so different colours of the cap and uh, the the piston knob there. Really solid, reliable pen, and at that price, 30 to 35 I think this is actually a real contender for the best starter pen on the market. The next pen uh, I'm showing you is the Kaweco Sport. Now, this comes in a million different finishes. There's ice versions, which are sort of see-through. There's this version. There's the uh, aluminium version, and, you know, the prices do sort of go up. There's a lovely brass version. This is a pocket pen, so it is, you know, if I hold this up next to, like, a Pilot Metropolitan here, you can see it's a small pen. 
but what's nice about it is when you uncap it, you put the cap on the end, you get a really nice sort of size pen, really good range of nibs. This is a double broad, so you can get from very fine through to quite wide nibs. Um, and it is a cartridge pen. Now, people do eyedropper this. I've never eyedroppered one. I would be a little hesitant to myself. Um, but there is the Kaweco uh, little converter here, which you can get separately, uh, but it does take standard international uh, cartridges, so the short ones. So um, good range of inks available there. Really handy pen to keep in your pocket. Retails this version. These are, you know, the sport versions, the plain plastic ones, for about uh, starting around $25. And different nibs cost a bit more and things like that. And different versions cost, obviously, a lot more than that again. One of my absolute favourite pen brands is Diplomat. Now, Diplomat have a huge range of pens, ranging to quite expensive. But this is their uh, most affordable option. This is the Magnum. This has a really surprisingly great nib on it. Um, it is a standard international cartridge converter pen, but converters will be hit and miss uh, in this particular pen I have found. Um, it's got a smaller section, it's a very light pen. Um, this is, I think, is a Goulet exclusive version, Goulet pens, uh, but the Magnums retail for $20 to $25. There's a couple of different nib options you can get uh, from fine through to broad, I think, and uh, nice colours and different sort of textured finishes, a soft one as well. So a pen worth looking at and a pen that's overlooked um, a lot. Diplomat is a wonderful brand. They do amazing things with their nibs. Like I said, this has got a surprisingly great nib uh, on it. So Diplomat Magnum, really nice pen, $20 to $25 American. Now we come to a brand that is actually probably one of my top three or four fountain pen brands on the market, and that is Faber-Castell. I'm going to start here with the Grip. Really good starter pen. This is a pen that has a nice nib on it, plain sort of steel nib. This is the black version. Um, but this model of pen in the different colors start at only $20 American. Like, super affordable. Standard international cartridge converter. Once again, converters might be a little bit, I think mine's disappeared into the pen. It's in, in the barrel at the moment. Um, might be a little bit hit and miss in terms of what um, you can get to fit in it. Uh, but the cartridges are really widely available. Uh, good range of nibs. This is an extra fine and I think you can get through to broad um, and retails it for around $20. So simple pen, light plastic, you know, just a good pen, the Faber-Castell Grip. The next Faber-Castell pen will come as no surprise to you. It is the Loom. Another of the more expensive pens on this list, I will admit, you know, depending on shopping around, around the $50 mark, 50 to 55 probably. This is a, a version that was out a few years ago. There are newer, you know, finishes and things. It's just a really wonderful pen. Got a great, great nib on it. Nice size. Some people have an issue with this grip being a bit slick, particularly on the metallic versions. Um, it is a standard international cartridge converter pen. I suggest getting a Faber-Castell converter for it though, because they tend to fit better. Uh, and, but you know, cartridges once again, widely available. Interesting pen, good range of nibs available through extra fine through to broad, uh, and but just a you know it's a unique looking pen and one of my absolute favourite pens and another pen I really suggest to a lot of people when they're looking to get into fountain pens. But I let them try what, like hold this first because you know some people just do not enjoy that grip. I find it to be quite nice and I find the balance of the pen to be really good. So that's my take on it. The last Faber Castell pen is a new model that's out on the market. is the Hexo. Uh, this is a this is a little bit cheaper. It's forty to forty five. Um, good nibs again. Cartridge converter. This is inked up at the moment. Metal pen. Uh, hexagonal shape. Sort of round grip. Um, and a reliable writer. Light. It's designed for writing over long periods of time. It's just a good handy sort of pen. And it's you know rugged and you know usable clip and all of those sorts of things. And because it is metal, it's a little bit more protected. Uh, Faber-Castell do lovely things. Even their lower end nibs write really beautifully. And uh, this is certainly no exception. Um, Faber-Castell Hexo, around the 40 to $45 mark. Now, the last two pens will come as no surprise. Neither will the brand. The brand is Lamy, of course. And you can't do a list like this without the Lamy Safari and the Lamy All-Star. Lamy is a German brand uh, and they use their own proprietary cartridges and converters. Uh, a nice range of, of uh, inks available from Lamy, or you can get this converter. Now, as again, when I show you, like the converter is a little inbuilt piston in you know the place where you would put a cartridge. Um, and 
it's yeah the the safari is a plastic pen abs plastic they come out with new versions each year there's a stock line um really good pens um and retail for around the 30 us dollar mark the all-star is it's uh aluminium aluminum brother uh same thing you know triangular grip uh which will get in the way for some people cartridge converter pen proprietary uh and just an interesting design the clip is polarizing that some of the shape stuff is polarizing um but what makes these pens really reliable and or really good options is two things in particular first the nibs now some people love the limey nibs other people don't necessarily always love them i'm a big fan but what i really love is the fact that they come from extra fine through to 1.9 millimeter so we're looking extra fine fine medium broad 1.1 1.5 and a 1.9 millimeter nib as well as having a left-handed nib available which is smoothed on the front edge of the nib just a little bit more to allow for that left-handed push motion across the page these are really great pens because they are not super wet so you can write on any paper particularly with the extra fine uh, and they are widely available a lot of retailers sell just the nib which you can buy for around the 15 dollar american mark but what i really like about lamy is just how widely available these pens are there are news agencies bookstores um you know stationery shops office supply stores the world over that sell lamy if you know i was recently uh in europe and uh needed some ink for Alami, I was able to walk into a like a bookshop and they had a little stand and I could get some ink and I was the way I was. That happens anywhere anywhere in the world. Here in Melbourne, right through to Iceland where I was at the time. So we're talking like widely, widely available with a good range of inks and everything. So these are these are pens that but and that goes for both uh pens here. So if you're Wanting a pen that you can experiment with, you can try different inks. Alami Safari or All Star. Now, as I said, Safari costs around $30 and the All Star around $37 American. Um, affordable pen, but also for $15, you can try a different nib as opposed to having to buy a new pen. Like if you just go, this nib is just too broad for me, you can get a medium or a fine or whatever the case may be for about $15. They have their own brand of cartridges, which are widely available. They have converters, so you can use bottled ink, either theirs, which they have a nice little range of colors, or any other brand of bottled fountain pen ink. So that is the Lamy, Safari, and All Star. So what is my, if I had to pick three pens uh, for a first fountain pen, I would do this. I would say, absolutely first, try a Platinum Preppy, $5.00 affordable reliable writes beautifully a couple of new options available different color inks available in the uh, platinum cartridges even so try a preppy then i would say alami safari like these are a pretty standard stock sort of pen as i said widely available the inks are available different nibs all of that sort of thing affordable rugged and strong great everyday carry pen chuck it in your backpack the last pen on my like in my sort of top three is the Twisby Eco. It's a piston filler, lots of different versions, uh, like finishes and stuff, reliable, good writers, nice pens, uh, and just interesting. So they would be my three if I had to choose three pens to suggest to people who are looking to get into fountain pens. So thank you for watching this video. I hope you found it interesting and useful, and I hope you got some information uh, that might help you begin your journey into fountain pens, or if you've got questions about any of these or any other pens, feel free to ask in the comments below. I'll, if I can help, I will get back to you. Otherwise, the pen community is a wonderful resource to tap into uh, and uh, just enjoy the experience of uh, delving into this wonderful uh, hobby and finding a fountain pen that really works for you. So as I said, thank you for watching. Um, please like and subscribe and all that sort of stuff. Hit the notifications button. Follow me on Instagram, I'm at the underscore offsage underscore me, uh, or you can drop me messages there, or you can drop me an email, which is uh, listed down below. Uh, if you've got products you think I should be looking at, or if there's like first fountain pens that you think um, could be potentially included on this list, drop them in the comments below. Love to hear from you or drop me an email. Um, if you'd like to support this channel and help me make more videos, um, get in touch. Like if you'd like to, you know, sponsor a review or provide an item for review or, 
whatever the case may be, I'd love to hear from you. In the meantime, enjoy your pens, enjoy your writing, and I'll talk to you soon.